Star Wars Summit by Summit episode 2506. It's a big day today. It is George Lucas's 77th birthday. 7 by 7. How funny is that? <laughs> and today I'm going to share with you some fun facts, or at least I hope you'll think they're fun facts. Stuff that isn't generally discussed about his life and career from across the decades. Punch it. And so he enrolled in Modesto Junior College after graduation, but then rather than go into the family stationary business, he continued on into the University of Southern California School for Cinematic Arts, and that's where he got his filmmaking degree. Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod, and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy, and thank you so much for joining me for it. So, in honor of George Lucas's birthday, we're going to take a trip through his life and career. We'll start in the 1960s, and there's a great story from his early days that's really a wonderful illustration of the we'll see concept. If you're familiar with the parable about the you know, farmer who has a son who helps him work in the field, and the son breaks his ankle, and all the neighbors are like, oh, how terrible, and the farmer says, we'll see. And the next day, the army comes by, and they're you know, just taking kids to go fight in the war, but they leave the son behind because the son has a broken ankle and all the neighbors say, oh, this is wonderful, this is great, you're so lucky. And the farmer says, we'll see, and it goes on and on like this. Well, this is straight from Wikipedia. It said, long before Lucas began making films, he yearned to be a race car driver and spent most of his high school years racing on the underground circuit at fairgrounds and hanging out at garages. On June 12, 1962, a few days before his high school graduation, Lucas was driving his souped up, here we go with the pronunciation, Auto Bianchi Bianchina, when another driver broadsided him, flipping his car several times before it crashed into a tree. Lucas's seatbelt had snapped, ejecting him and thereby saving his life. However, his lungs were bruised from severe hemorrhaging and he required emergency medical treatment. This incident caused him to lose interest in racing as a career, but also inspired him to pursue his other interests, like filmmaking, maybe? <laughs> in the 1980s, of course, he finished up the first Star Wars trilogy and also was deeply involved in the creation of the original Indiana Jones trilogy, right? The original three movies that came out, which were, of course, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom and The Last Crusade in 1989. Now, moving into the 1970s, of course, that's when Star Wars debuted, naturally, and American Graffiti as well. But there were other things that were going on in Lucas's life professionally that were also exceedingly important because, as we all know, he is you know, very focused on not only the business side of things, but also the technical development side of things. So in addition to the founding of Lucasfilm in 1971, and as we've talked about on the show, this is its 50th anniversary, that's coming in December, officially, 1970s also saw Lucas found um, ILM, that was in 1975, and Skywalker Sound as well. Pixar actually began as part of Lucasfilm's computer division, which was known as the Graphics Group, in 1979. And Lucas himself, you know, prior to the success of American Graffiti and Star Wars, had been working in, you know, smaller positions on other people's films. So he was actually a camera operator for Gimme Shelter, which is the Rolling Stones documentary, and also was an assistant editor on The Godfather. He was also starting more companies, or at least starting divisions that would become companies, including Lucasfilm Games in 82 and THX, the sound system folks, in 1983. But he was also very active as an executive producer, helping get other people's movies get made. Though he is, of course, a fan of Akira Kurosawa, and a lot of his movies were very influential in the original Star Wars. Well, he got to produce one of Kurosawa's movies, which was uh, Kagimusha, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, in the 80s, and also produced a whole raft of other movies are executive produced, including Twice Upon a Time, Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters, Labyrinth, the Jim Henson movie with Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie, right? That awesome movie. Uh, Howard the Duck, <laughs> maybe the less said about that one, the better. Um, Poa Quatsi, another pronunciation thing, which was actually part of a trilogy of very avant-garde movies that featured a soundtrack by Philip Glass, who was also a very avant-garde kind of guy, and this movie, Poet 
Kotze was the second movie in the trilogy. Uh, also Willow, he executive produced Willow in the 80s, and Tucker, the Man in His Dream, and The Land Before Time. He also executive produced the Ewoks and Droids cartoons that hit Saturday morning lineups. Now in the 1990s, seeing the success of the launch of the Expanded Universe, the sort of official launch, if you will, right? Because there already was an Expanded Universe. There had been a you know, series of novels by Brian Daly about Han Solo and the L. Neil Smith novels about Lando Calrissian and Splinter of the Mind's Eye by Alan Dean Foster and the Star Wars comics from Marvel, right? So, you know, it existed, but not in the focused and explosive way that happened with the beginning of the, you know, Thrawn novels and the Heir to the Empire trilogy, right, launching in the 90s. Like, that was the big comeback for Star Wars that then led to the creation of the special editions of the original trilogy and then to the writing and creation of the first movie in the prequel trilogy, The Phantom Menace, in 99. But there was another project very close to his heart that was going on in the 90s, and it's really a significant one. It was the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, so that series of you know television shows and television movies and eventually it was recut and re-spliced and new footage was filmed to reorder everything into the adventures of young indiana jones and they created 22 television films out of this whole thing that was originally i guess 28 episodes and four tv films most of that was done in the 1990s Moving on into the 2000s, of course, Lucas finished the prequel trilogy with Attack of the Clones in 2002 and Revenge of the Sith in 2005. After that, uh, the American Film Institute awarded George Lucas its Life Achievement Award that was on June 9th, 2005, so shortly after the release of Revenge of the Sith. Uh, and uh, according to Wikipedia, George Lucas uh, joked about it, stating that since he views the entire Star Wars series as one film, he could actually receive the award now that he had finally gone back and finished the movie, quote unquote. And of course, the 2000s were significant for, I think, basically the final company launch that Lucas had, which was Lucasfilm Animation in 2003, which would later lead to the development of the Clone Wars movie and the Clone Wars TV series in 2008, launching in 2008. Despite his otherwise very serious demeanor, very self-deprecating and silly guy on some occasions too. And he also had a couple of very unusual TV cameos. There was a TV show called Just Shoot Me in the 2000s and another one called The OC and he had cameo appearances on those two TV shows for some heaven unknown reason. And yeah, maybe we'll dig back into those for a What to Watch Now segment later on this year. Just, you know, for the heck of it and see what actually happened on those things. And then we get to the 2010s. Now, this has been told before, but apparently it's popping up again because the actor, writer, and producer Seth Rogen has come out with a book called Yearbook, which is sort of a memoir and, you know, sort of not. But he tells in it a story that he has told previously where he claims that he was having a meeting with his producing partner, writing partner Evan Goldberg, with Steven Spielberg. And during the meeting, and this apparently happened in 2011, George Lucas crashed the meeting allegedly and talked about how he was convinced that the world was going to end in 2012 or at the very least that the San Andreas Fault would trigger and half of California would slide into the sea. And there was apparently conversation about, you know, whether Lucas would be, you know, trying to build a spaceship to get off Earth. And if he did, would he invite Seth Rogen and presumably Evan Goldberg onto the spaceship as well? And Lucas flat out told him no, just straight <laughs> no, period, paragraph, end of story. Although I believe Lucas has actually denied this story, but yeah, Seth Rogen's going to keep telling it apparently. <laughs> so it does kind of put the sale of Lucasfilm to Disney in a different light since it did happen before when everybody said the cataclysm in 2012 was going to happen, right? That was supposed to be in December of 2012. And the sale of Lucasfilm to Disney happened in October of 2012. So amazing numbers from this. So apparently this was done as a deal with 55% cash for the sale and 45% Disney stock. So that meant that Lucas got 2.21 billion in cash and also got 
37 million shares of stock in Disney, which was trading for around $50 at the time. So it made it a $1.85 billion sale or part of the sale, I guess. And crazily enough, I looked online just before recording this and Disney shares are now trading for $178 a share. So that $128 above what it had been when Lucas sold it, which means that assuming Lucas still has all 37 million of his shares, they were worth 1.85 billion. Now they're worth 6.59 billion dollars. Holy cow! And since then, even though he provided treatments for a sequel trilogy, ultimately the treatments were not used. But he still consulted on the stories for The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker. He visited the set for Rogue One and may have, you know, said a thing or two <laughs> about it while he was there. I'm sure. And also consulted a bit on Solo: A Star Wars Story as well. And he's also been documented as having visited the set of The Mandalorian both in season one and season two. Still mentoring, still helping people understand all of the important details of Star Wars and what it really means. And now here we are in the 2020s and what is his next act going to be? Well, it seems that it's going to be the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art. Like that's the big thing for him right now. So according to Wikipedia, it's a museum founded by filmmaker George Lucas and his wife, businesswoman Melody Hobson. Once completed, it will hold paintings, photography, illustration, cinematic art, and digital art from Lucas's personal collection, as well as a Star Wars exhibit. It will be located in Exposition Park in Los Angeles, and it's scheduled to be open in late 2022. They've already broken ground on it. It's in the works. So there you go. There's a breezy look at some fun facts about the life and career of George Lucas, stuff that we don't generally talk about in, you know, his stuff because we spend so much time talking about Star Wars, but the guy's had a lot of other stuff going on in life, and I hope you enjoyed uh, hearing about some of these other things. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode of the show today, and, you know, I hope you, like me, will be saying a quiet thank you to the universe and, you know, possibly more vocally on some social media platform or something like that, just to thank you for everything that George Lucas did to create this incredible galaxy far, far away that we all get to enjoy. So there you go. That's it for today's show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always, and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Seven by Seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.